G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. I'm building a giant dining table here. It's going to be about almost 3 metres long and 1.2 metres wide. It's made of spotted gum. It's very heavy. I need a few people to help me lift it. But I'm actually putting what's called a shark nose edge on uh, the whole edge of the table. Now that's a feature that uses a 45, usually a 45 degree chamfer on the underside and a round over on the top. Uh, you can choose the ratio between that chamfer and that round over depending on what visually you're looking for in that, in that edge joint. But uh, I've set this up and I thought I'd just run you through the process, a few tips and tricks a few little things and pitfalls to watch out for, otherwise it's pretty straightforward, but it's a great use of a chamfer bit, and it's actually a really nice edge that I, I really enjoy using. If you're gonna create this profile on something that's quite thin or some really soft timber like pine, you can probably get away with just doing it in two steps. You're gonna cut that chamfer first, and then you're gonna cut that round over second on the top of the piece. But with this 35 mil uh, spotter gum, it's just way too hard. And there are two things that you've really gotta look out for. You don't wanna take off so much material that you're gonna damage your router or damage the timber. And so you wanna do it either in multiple passes with your router, or you need to remove some of the material first. I'm mainly talking about that chamfer with that. With the round over, I was able to do that in one pass and get a clean cut, so that was okay. So, you've got to remove some material first. Uh, I actually ended up using my electric planer. It did a great job of removing the bulk of that corner so that then the router could do the fine work. The second thing that you really have to think about is grain direction and tear out. On a brittle timber like spotted gum that has a tendency to rip chunks out if you cut against the grain, you've got to be really careful because you don't have an option when using a handheld, using a handheld router. You don't have the option of changing the direction that you're working against the grain. I have to be working from the bottom of the table and I have to be moving this direction because of the direction of the blade. But my grain direction on this piece of timber actually is going the opposite way that I would like it to. In fact, so what I'm saying is that the grain direction with the direction of this router blade will have a tendency, tendency to cause tear out. So what I need to do is remove as much material as possible in a way that will not remove, cause tear out and then use the router to just take off the finest amount at the end to get a really nice clean finish. When I first started out woodworking, I just tried to ignore grain direction and I just kind of hoped it would go away and it wouldn't bother me. And sometimes I got away with it, but as I've done more and more projects, it really is something that's worth knowing about. And it's not too tricky, it just takes a little bit of thinking about. So on my board here, I can see these black uh, fissure lines or crack lines, and they're really nice indications of which way this grain is going. And so I'm just gonna draw them in with a blue pencil so you can see them a little bit more easily. Um, if you don't have these cracks, what you're looking, at for, looking for is um, these big loops or whirls in the timber, and I'll draw them on as well so you can see how that relates to the way the grain will be interacting with this edge, which is what I'm concerned about. So I've got a couple big loops here, and then overall, you can also see that these black fissure lines or these cracks are moving in this direction towards the edge. So I know that I've got a whole bunch of fibers pointing out towards me. As in, if I run, ran my hand along this way, I'd be more likely to get splinters than I would going this way. And you can consider the splinter thing to be exactly the same when using a router bit. This router bit is gonna sit on the edge and turn, pushing that blade in this direction. So just as, as your hand would get splinters, the blade on this router bit is gonna lift those fibers and tear them out, potentially ripping a chunk off the side of the table that you can't repair, which could be really problematic for a table that's this big because I don't wanna to have to fix it. Um, I've actually got some really clear splinter lines on the side here, which I know will tear out if I'm not careful, and so I have to be really careful with them. So what I've done 
is I've actually grabbed my electric planer and I've ran over this chamfer before using my router from the opposite direction because I know that that will not cause tear out. So I've taken a few mil off at a time, ran the planer in this direction in a number of passes until I've brought that chamfer down pretty close to where I actually want to end up with this router bit. And that worked perfectly. I didn't get any tear out at all, which is exactly what I wanted. When I go to do a pass with the router, you want to make sure that you're not taking off very much material. And also, when I get to these potential splinter points, which I have to be really careful of, what I do is I actually bring the router to just before that splinter point starts, so I haven't touched it, and then I skip over it to just behind it, I push the router in, and then I actually bring the router towards me very, very controlled and slowly. I'm only skipping over about uh, 50 mil at most, and this is the only time I will ever use a router working with the bit, uh, as in working against the direction that you should be with a router bit. Uh, the reason we only ever use a router in one direction is because it wants to run towards you in one direction and when you're pushing it away from you, you can use it in a controlled manner. So this is the only time that I ever let it run towards me and I put a lot of firm weight on it so that it's not going to and I'm only ever doing it in a bit where there's about uh, 30, 40, 50 millimeters of wood that it can grab so it can never get out of control. And what this allows me to do is actually jump over that splinter point, pull back in towards it, which means that I can cleanly cut it out without lifting any fibers away. So I've done that in one pass and then I'm gonna drop my chamfer to my final depth and do it in a second pass and I can pretty much guarantee that I'll get a clean, tear out free finish along this edge. It sounds complicated, but with the close-ups, I hope you've got a really clear idea of what I've done and uh, you can get a good result as well. I'm ready to do some routing. As you saw, I've already taken some material off on this edge. I haven't taken any off on the end of the table yet. So I'm gonna do one pass to bring the end grain down to the same level as I've already cut here. I don't need to use my planer on the end grain because I don't need to worry about grain direction. Uh, I just need to do multiple passes though because cutting into grain direction with the router is tricky. It, I mean, it's hard work for the router, so you don't want to do a really deep cut in one pass. So I'll bring that down to this level and then I'll be able to do a final pass to the depth that I'm actually aiming for and you'll be able to see that technique of jumping over those splinter points like I was talking about. And then these two edges will be done and then you don't need to see me doing the other side because it'll be exactly the same process worrying about grain direction, etc. So we completed our chamfer in a couple of passes on the underside of the table and then we flipped it over. Now we're ready to do our round over. Again, if this was really soft wood or you didn't really care about the piece and you hadn't already spent 12 hours making it, you could probably do it in one pass. This is a fairly small round over bit. I'm going to use my handheld trimmer router. You could just as easily use a larger router if that's what you have and that's what you're comfortable with, but I love this little thing. I am still going to do this in two passes because this is a particularly brittle type of timber and I really want to avoid any tear out. There's a couple of places where tear out is common uh, on the edges in exactly the same way as we showed you with the chamfer on the underside. So if you've got any of those little black split lines that come right to the edge, then you need to use that same technique of coming up to them, jumping over and running backwards over them. The other area that you need to be considerate of is actually this end grain edge. I have a couple of places where this has already tried to chip out in really small amounts. And so I wanna make sure that that doesn't continue and that I can round over that smoothly. So that's why I'm gonna do this in two passes. If you've got some really problematic end grain on the top edge, you could possibly uh, sand that top edge back to remove some of the material and remove any of those hairs that wanna tear away. Uh, but I think doing two passes on my nice sharp 
uh, round over bit will do a fantastic job on this. One last thing to consider, I have really nice round corners on this, so I'm not gonna get tear out as I come around the corner. But, if you have a table where you've retained that square edge, as you bring the round over bit to that corner, if you continue right through, you'll rip, lost my pencil, you'll rip those fibers away. So what you need to do is that same technique, come close to the edge, jump over it, really carefully and firmly, run the router backwards over that corner, that'll prevent that tear out, and then continue through. And I found that, that works even on really hard, brittle timber like spotted gum. That little jumping uh, technique, you don't want to go too far. So you're really just aiming to just overshoot that corner and then run it back just around. But you want to have rounded right up to it uh, from the correct direction first without going over so that there's not a lot of material that the router has to run over backwards. So we've completed our chamfer and our round over. I need to give this whole thing a sand. I'll probably just end up hand sanding all of these edges to give them a really nice smooth finish. But otherwise, that's it. If you wanted a deeper chamfer, you can. It's just up to your aesthetic preference and the ability of your handheld router to take a larger chamfer bit. So there is that limitation. But uh, otherwise, if you want any more information on these router bits or any others, just click on these links below.